a bit of data to to sort of work work with. But the actual code to do that, we'll look, we'll, we'll we'll build it up just in a second. We do it by using something called templates to work on it. We look for matching certain tags. And then when we match a tag, we look for other tag being mentioned inside it and decide which, which parts we want. And that's the bit that we're just going through now. You say, well, how do we build up one of these? We have our XML source, our set of rules, some sort of processor, and send it to the output. Now, in that particular case, we were generating it to, um, to, to, to the screen using a web browser. But quite often, you're not necessarily sort of doing this in a web browser. You're doing it just because you want to work on, the, uh, on, your, on your actual sort of client machine or your server-side machine and take this XML document and transform it into something else before you, you send it off. It's just a process that it goes through, not necessarily something that your users go and see. Browsers have got it built in, and you can do it like that, but you can also use uh, an XSLT processor that's just like a standalone application, basically, to, to do that. And we'll, we'll try both of these out uh, to work with. So I'm going to build up a, an example using that basic source document. Now, these, these documents are the ones that I've just mentioned are available on the, on the web page. So if you want to get hold of the the raw XML for this and the, um, the XSLT as well, then just use those that's on, the, on, on Moodle. I say do it using that rather than using, you could use your PDF files and just copy and paste out of that. Uh, but some people have found out in the labs a long standing problem with copying and pasting from uh, PDF is that it uses a slightly different character set. For example, these double quotes are the 66 and 99 ones, and they're not the, the, the sort of double quotes that uh, are the, the official ASCII ones, if you like, that's used in, in straightforward text files. So you, you, would, you would find that you would have to <laughs> copy and paste and then do some sort of changing round. You, you, people have often found this just to their own dismay in the past when they're copying and pasting out of PDFs. So that's why I'm just trying to give you the, the actual raw data files. You'll see them. Uh, the raw data files doesn't look sort of too much different but these aren't the 6699 wrappers around uh, the data to work with you be uh, using so if you do want to try these out as I say you use the uh, the ones off Moodle rather than you can do that but you'd just be doing a bit more editing so there's a basic XML document there for um, Feynman and, and, and Turing to, to work with. And then we're just going to look at a, an XSLT example. Very, very simple one at the start. <coughs> uh, and these XSLTs are just basically, as I say, pattern matching rules to it. It's a similar approach to CSS, but it looks very different. Uh, but the, the, the approach is the same. Uh, now, XSL is defined itself over uh, this uh, W3 organization. So that's the, 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 the top bit in yellow is the, the, the most basic transform that you can have. It doesn't actually do anything, uh, but it's, it's defining that namespace for XSL coming over from um, the W3 uh, organization. We've got an XSL style sheet beginning, XSL just referencing the W3 site and then a slash one at the end. So there's nothing actually in between. All it's doing is identifying that fully qualified name, connect the style sheet, no, no rules in, uh, inside it. And you'll, that's your, your sort of empty template uh, from it. But you can even use that sort of set of rules on an XML document. Uh, it doesn't do much, and we'll see what it does at the, at, the, at the start. If you actually apply that document all it does is strip out the tags. They were the, the, the raw data inside it, that Turing computer scientist, well, Alan, just hidden away at the top. That was the raw data coming out of it there. 
And all the, uh, the, the blank pattern match does is to strip away all the tags. Now we can show that happening. I've got, some, I've got these sort of uh, ready available in here. So I've got, for example, lecture transform one. A blank template. Like I, I think this might be the one after it. I don't think it's totally blank. Uh, for it. We'll apply this one. This one, this one is um, lecture. This is the lecture transform one. You want to sort of try it out uh, for it. That's a set of rules saying that the uh, there's a sort of generic pattern match. But if you want to try it inside a document, at the top of your document, this is my XML, I indicate the transform that this is going to work with. Now currently by the default I'd set it to be in uh, that fifth one. I'll change it to be the first one and save it. Now my document here that I loaded up was the XML. If I just refresh that, and I've got an error. That's probably one of those double quotes. Line 8, column 1, that's a great start. Oh, is it in the transform maybe, sorry. Yeah, it's in the transform 1. I think I only tested the very last two through there. Is there some part of a tag missing? So I'll try with a second example later on. Um, this default behaviour that we're that, that, that we're working on. All a, a sort of blank one does is just to strip out all, all the, um, the actual tags and gives you the basic content of the XML. So that includes all the white spacing and the carriage returns. So that, that was the, the basic raw data content of your, of your sort of document uh, for it. And if you want, want to modify that default behavior, then you just specify different rules of how to work with. So. We ha might have a, a, a sort of rule where you're saying, look, if ever you can match this particular pattern, then I want you to do this. Now, the pattern is generally a tag that you're looking for in the simplest um, occurrence. So you, you, your, rule, your, your processor is going to say, right, that one of the rules is to look for this pattern, look for this particular tag string, and then when you do it, this, these are, the, set of, these are the, the things that I want you to do. In the, in the template for it. So for example, <coughs> what this, what the, the, the red here is indicating what the, the new thing that I've just sort of added in. This is saying anytime you come across a person type, then I want you to just output this inside it. So match a person and then just write out a person. So compared to that document that we've got, remember the original document, we've got two person tags in here. Person tag for Alan Turing, another person tag for Richard Feynman. So every time you find this tag of person, <coughs> pretty, pretty much like you, you did for the programmatic approach, every time you find that tag for a person, do that that transform. So that's transform number two. Let me just try uh, changing that in the example. So that's going to say, well, let's find transform number two. Oh, fingers crossed. A person, a person coming out. The source code, again, just to sort of show that where it's working from. If I view the page source, that's still the, the XML that's been fed to the processor. So the browser has read in that document, but using that set of rules, that transform rule two, using that set of rules, 
has just sort of said, okay, yeah, this is just every time it came across a person, it, it sort of printed out. Now that, you know, you might say, well, that's, you know, that's not a big deal. Sort of thing, but yeah, well. Can you replace, like, for example, your FRS and can we pull the HTML tags? You can put in whatever you like, yeah, exactly. That's, that's a good sort of thing to that. So, if you wanted, if I mean, this is just generating a text document, but if I wanted to generate uh, a person, which is a good, a good example, so I might sort of say, well, let's put uh, a P tag before slash P after. And perhaps even put it in a an H1 again around it. Now in that case, it's just still got to write out uh, a person, if you like. I'll save that and refresh. Ah, I know why it's not done. Sorry, I know why it's not done it. It's because it's a bit trickier uh, thing to do around. That's okay. It, it will have generated that as its output, p h1 slash h1 slash p at the end, but it's not a full HTML document to render. To, for, for full HTML, you need to have, in HTML5, you need to have your HTML tag at the start and then slash HTML at the end. Uh, and so what you, what you sort of...